joining me today. My friends, this spring, I traveled across Ontario. I spoke with hardworking women and men all across the province. I met with small business owners, truck drivers, construction workers, young people who commute every day to their jobs. And every one of them said the same thing. Life is becoming more expensive. Inflation is having an impact across the board. Affordability is the number one concern right now right across the province. And the biggest part of that, where folks are feeling the most pain, is the skyrocketing cost of gas. You see it on every street corner as gas prices rise to levels we have never seen before. It doesn't matter if your vehicle gets you to your place of work or if your vehicle is your place of work. The reality is that people simply can't afford the price of gas right now. It's a real problem and our government is doing something about it. And so, as promised, we're cutting the provincial gas tax. Effective July the 1st, for the rest of the year, Ontario's gas tax will be cut by nearly 40 percent. I'll repeat that, 40 percent. Saving customers 5.7 cents per litre, the fuel tax rate, which applies to diesel, will be reduced from 14.3 cents per litre down to 9 cents per litre representing a savings of 5.3 cents per litre. This is in addition to the 4.3 cents per litre we removed when the cap and trade system was eliminated, bringing the total savings 10 cents per litre. We're doing our part to help. We're taking decisive action to help Ontarians where they need it most. Whether you are planning a summer getaway or have a business transporting goods across the province or just need a little help with your day-to-day -day expenses. This will put more money back in your pocket where it belongs. In addition to our elimination of license plate renewal fees, this new gas tax cut will mean an average combined savings of around $465 this year per household that owns a vehicle. These are real savings that will mean something to Ontario families. Of course, the cost of fuel has impacts well beyond just what it costs to fill up a tank. It impacts everything in our day-to-day -day lives. So when the cost of gas goes up, so does the cost of groceries, the cost of clothes and school supplies, the cost to take your family out to dinner at a local restaurant. It all adds up little by little. And so while this gas tax cut will provide families with immediate relief, it will also help with the cost of everyday essentials. But we need to do more. And this is a time for all governments to come together to take pressure off Canadians when they need it most. That's why I continue to call on the federal government and partners to match our government's cut to the gas tax. This is a real tangible solution that we can deliver for Canadians at a time when costs are higher than they've ever been. And supply chain issues and global conflict are only making things worse. Friends, our government is on a mission to do everything possible to keep costs down for you. We're going to continue putting money back into your pockets of hard-working people. It's your money and you should have more of it to spend the way you want to. Ontarians sent us here to get it done for them, to listen to what they need and to deliver. We will not let them down. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Hi, Premier. Rob Ferguson, Toronto doing, Star. Rob? I'm great, thank you. Um, I have a gas, question, gas tax question in a moment, but the first one I just wanted to ask about the House returning. Apparently it's August 8th. Will that be for election of a speaker, throne speech, and then budget? That, well, anything correct. else? What, what is going to happen then? Well, that, that's correct, Rob, and we're going to come back uh, August 8th. I think we'll be sitting approximately for five weeks, and uh, we're going to get things moving forward. We will pass the the budget, the, the great budget that Minister Beth and Falvey here uh, put together, and uh, we're going to uh, move things forward as quickly as possible. All right. On the gas tax, I just wanted to take it a little bit further uh, sure. because uh, sales of electric vehicles are picking up, and at some point, you're not going to be making uh, as much money for the, from the gas tax uh, to take care of roads and infrastructure. So yeah. has have you been thinking yet of... of how how this tax will transition and at some point might you put some kind of a road user fee on electric vehicles a few years down the road 
uh, to make up for what you're not getting in the gas tax? Yeah, thanks for that, Rob. That was an excellent question. We have thought of it. And I've always said we, we don't need more taxes. We need more taxpayers paying the taxes. And we're, we're short 340,000 people. And uh, we just need to, and that's going to be one of the number one issues I'm going to be speaking at the Confederation uh, meeting out in B BC with the other premiers about bringing more immigrants into our country and to f fulfill the jobs that they uh, that we require right now and that will create more revenues but uh, excellent question not to mention um, you know the, the tens of thousands of jobs that uh, the auto sector is going to be hiring no matter if it's manufacturing batteries in, in Windsor or manufacturing electric vehicles right across the, the province and and uh, the different uh, manufacturing sites, uh, be it be it up in Alliston or, or uh, in Oakville and Windsor and Ingersoll and Woodstock and Oshawa and Brampton. So there's uh, they've created a tremendous amount of jobs, which will create more revenue up to the the provincial coffers. Sorry, I'm squinting, guys. This, this sun's super bright today. Premier, it's Jamie with City TV. Hi, these, Jamie. these questions are shipped in by Cynthia. Yep. Um, Cynthia would like to ask, um, given there's a time allocation on this tax break, uh, would you consider if inflation is still high uh, at the end of the year, we consider making it permanent? Well, we'll, we'll look at it, but I really want to uh, ask the federal government, I implore them to do the same thing. They, there's a 11 cents of the carbon tax they can get rid of. Just imagine if we could knock down the prices by 20 some odd cents. Uh, we've done 10 cents so far. If the feds do another 11 cents, that's 21 cents. Uh, that'd be huge savings, and they can do it temporarily. I, I get it. If they want to just do it through the peak areas of the summer or up to the end of the year, that's how you put real money into people's pockets. That's how you keep the cost of groceries down and inflation down. Uh, that's what we need to do. Hey, thank you very much. And the second question is uh, for Highway 413. Yes. Um, when did you know that the, about the endangered species? Are you concerned about will it uh, slow, slow the building of it down? Um, is there a movement on the 413? Yeah, so we've done, we're doing the environmental assessment. I'm going to pass it over to Caroline uh, in, a, in a second here. But uh, we're, we're following all the guidelines. We're being super careful. We're being very conscien conscious about the environment. But we were democratically elected in that whole region. Uh, I don't know if folks have ever driven. I know the people of Brampton uh, know how busy it is. Try to get through Brampton and to Brampton in rush hour in the morning and night. It's an absolute nightmare. We have to uh, continue focusing on building 413 and the Bradford Bypass and, and the other highways right across the, the province. But, you know, the, the architect of this plan has done an incredible job as Minister Mulroney, and I'll pass it over to the minister. Uh, thank you, Premier. Well, um, the study that you're referencing is, is part of the work that we're doing as part of the environmental assessment process on the Highway 413. We have a very rigorous environmental assessment process in place in Ontario, uh, and so we're taking all the steps that are necessary, um, and we're, we're, so we're going to continue with that, but we are moving forward with building the, building the highway. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Premier. Good morning. Uh, so several experts have said that a gas tax won't do much since the prices of gas is going up due to demand uh, and that a gas tax really won't do that much since prices will still continue to go uh, a lot higher. So my question is, why isn't the government focusing more on insurance rates? We're in Brampton. It's probably one of the most expensive places to actually have insurance in the province. Why isn't the government focusing more on that rather than a temporary gas tax? Well, I'm going to respectfully disagree with whoever says cutting uh, the gas tax by uh, 10 cents overall doesn't uh, affect and, and help, uh, you know, the people of Ontario. It helps them in a massive, massive way. And I, I know we're working on uh, a plan for insurance companies. As far as I'm, I'm concerned, it's totally unfair to the people of Brampton or Scarborough that they're going after these people based on their postal code. That's going to come to an end real, real quickly. They have to treat people fairly right across the board. Insurance companies are making tons of money, and it's coming out of the pockets of Ontarians, so uh, we're going to be all over them. And I'm just going to pivot to education. So QP yes. is currently at Queen's Park right now holding a press conference on Bill 124. You haven't given a firm answer on whether or not you plan to repeal it or not. So can you definitively say yes or no, yes or no whether or not you plan on repealing Bill 124? Well, what I can tell you is uh, their increase is going to be more than 
Uh, it's not going to be through the roof, but it's going to be uh, very fair to, to everyone. We fully understand uh, inflation. We fully understand the cost of living is going up. But my message to the, the teachers union is one thing. Those kids have to be back in school in September, and they have to be back in school with extracurricular activities. And I have all the confidence in Minister Lecce. He'll do a fine job in fairly negotiating uh, a deal. And I always emphasize the word fair. Uh, I, I, I get it. I understand uh, costs are going up. But we cannot have the kids out of school uh, no matter what. Hi, Premier. Holly mckenzie Suter with Hi, Canadian Holly. Press. Yeah, I wanted to ask about um, your plan for the fourth COVID vaccine doses now that NACI is recommending them for the fall. Do you have a plan and when are we going to see it? We do. Actually, we were talking to, to Dr. Moore actually yesterday about that and he's going to move forward. We have all the confidence in Dr. Moore. I want to thank him for the great work he's done through the, the pandemic and uh, you'll hear further about our, our rollout uh, in the next little while. But uh, we, we were discussing that yesterday, actually. And do you have a plan for um, when you might or if you would ever bring back masks in high risk settings like the healthcare or transit, just because we know the new variant is a lot more contagious? Like, have you talked about that as well? Yeah, we, we have, but I, I'm going to follow the guidelines of, of Dr. Moore and public health and, and uh, the recommendations, as I have right from the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, he's been a phenomenal partner, and all, all the uh, advice that we've been getting from the doctors and and everyone involved, uh, I always believe in following uh, health. And I have one more question sure. unrelated about um, the big city mayors in the province have asked twice in the past two weeks for an emergency meeting to address the homelessness crisis. What are you going to do to help the cities and people living on the streets? Well, we're, we're going to help them any, any way we can. We're putting hundreds of millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, helping the, the homeless, uh, not, not just in Toronto, but all regions. And we need to get uh, more residents built. We need to cut the red tape. We need to work hand in hand with the municipalities. But uh, we've stepped up huge in, in uh, supporting uh, communities and we're going to continue supporting them. We want everyone to have shelter. We want everyone to have a meal in front of them. We're going to take care of them. Good morning, Mr. Premier. Andrew Good Brandon, CTV. Now, Premier, uh, much like my colleague did mention earlier, experts do say that a lot of what's being cut today or what's being put in place tomorrow will inevitably be eaten up, especially during the summer months. Is this as far as Ontario can go alone, especially with the federal government that has more regulations coming in, which could increase gas ta like just 13 cents for one regulation that's going to be put in place by 2030? Do you need help from Ottawa? We do. We're in desperate need. Thank you for that question. We're in desperate need of help from Ottawa. I just... You know something, when it comes to governments, no matter if it's municipal, provincial, or federal, I just, sometimes I just don't understand it. People are in desperate need of, of a little relief right now. We're, we're stepping up with 10 cents and yeah, it's, it's probably going to ding us a little bit on the budget, but the feds have to do the same thing. They, even if it's temporary, we know the peak traveling season is in the, in the summer. People are going up north, they're traveling away, uh, you know, with their families and and give them a break. Why, why is the government always trying to gouge people? You know, if you have governments of all levels, all they want to do is tax, tax, tax people. I don't believe in that. I believe in giving temporary relief, putting money back into people's pockets. They'll go out and spend that money in areas that they might otherwise not have. And I'm a strong believer in, in reducing the, the, the gas tax. So we're going to reduce it as a total of 10 cents uh, per liter, and it's going to go till December. And then, see, what, what people don't realize, gas companies switch over their, their type of gas in the winter. So the, the gas in the winter is different than the summer, and in the winter, it usually drops uh, the, the gas. So let's hope they continue on that road. But, you know, if you look at it, uh, I don't control the gas prices worldwide. Uh, you know, I wish I did. Uh, it, you know, we, we see challenges around the world. Uh, we saw what happened with... Uh, uh, President Biden in the U.S., he cut off the pipeline, which was the craziest thing I've ever heard. And then he's over begging to Saudi Arabia and the rest of these countries, Venezuela, to give us gas. you got to be kidding. When we have plenty of gas, we could probably pump out another 800,000 barrels a day if we had the, the uh, pipeline. Uh, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, the Keystone. So I, I, I don't understand. It's, it's a no-brainer to me, but I don't control the gas prices. We're, we're maxing out uh, what we can do for the, the taxpayers of Ontario. 
Thank you for that. And uh, on a follow-up on inflation in unions, and maybe Minister Beth Unfalvi can potentially yep. answer on this one well. Now, QP is using your own words essentially against you on negotiating fairly, and they're looking to repeal Bill 124. Looking at mm -hmm. some of the federal unions, they're looking at an increase for their uh, next contract of 13.5%. Inflation's at 77 What do you think about uh, those demands? And again, on Bill 124, what's... Well, I can't, I can't comment on the, on the, you know, the, the feds. But we're going to be we're going to be fair. We're going to be fair and respectful to the taxpayers. We're going to be fair to the the men and women that are out there working day in and day out, uh, no matter if they work for the government or they they don't work for the government. But uh, good point. I'll pass it over to the Minister of Finance and answer that. I told him he's looking pretty sharp today, kind of like Don Johnson. Now, nah, yeah, for younger people, who's Don Johnson? Miami Vice, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you just aged both of us, yeah, uh, Premier. Uh, no, thank you, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, we're, we're very aware of, of the current environment that we're in, you know, and I think the Premier said it best. You know, we want to be fair, we want to respect the taxpayers, we want to recognize the environment that we're in. Uh, and I would just add that uh, through the Premier's leadership and through the campaign, you know, we're taking action to help people with the environment that we're in. So it's not just the gas tax, you know, taking off the tolls of 412, 418 that the Premier's mentioned, you know, the, the license plate stickers. And also, uh, for those traveling starting tomorrow, the staycation tax credit is in place for the full year, uh, up to $400 back for families uh, in their park pockets if they stay at a, an Ontario campground or bed and breakfast or, or uh, hotel accommodation. So. There's lots of things that go into helping uh, keep costs down, and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work uh, hard with uh, the various uh, negotiating partners to come up with uh, what we think is fair for everyone. So thank you. Good morning, Premier. Prabhjot Soho from Red FM. Hi. Uh, my question is regarding the child care fee reduction program. Uh, while municipalities and regions are now accepting applications, what yes. we are hearing here from many operators in Peel is that they're reluctant to sign up. They say the details being given to them are a little vague and they're not sure if they will meet their expenses. So what is the province doing to address these concerns of child care operators and help municipalities speed up the process? Well, and thank you for that question. You're right. It, it falls on the municipalities. They have to move forward. We're getting more and more people signing up. But if they have any questions, by all means, uh, reach, reach out to our, our ministry and they'd be more than happy to help them through. Um, and the, the savings is going to be retroactive. I just want to mention that to the parents. It's going to be retroactive uh, back to April the 1st, I believe, and, and uh, you'll, you'll get reimbursed. But we, we need to get this moving as quickly as possible. Uh, if they need support, reach out to the ministry. We'll help you any way we can. But uh, we got to get moving on this. There's going to be a 25% reduction immediately, another 25% reduction at the end of December, and the, the balance the, the following year. So that, again, gives a lot of relief. And our, our goal um, is to get to the $10 a day daycare uh, program that we put forward. And, you know, we had a great partnership with uh, the federal government. So I, I want to thank them uh, for doing that. I think we had an incredible uh, deal for the people of Ontario. The goal to uh, give back checks of 25% rebate was May, so are you looking to uh, probably yep. give 50% by the end of the year, change the, our are. goals? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to do 25% immediately, another 25% at the uh, end of the year, uh, but I, I just want to mention again that it's going to be retroactive, so um, you're, you're going to get paid back to April the 1st. Hi, Premier Jack Howen. Hi, Jack. Briefing. Um, so the Council of Federations coming up. Yeah. What yeah. are uh, what are your top priorities? And uh, if you could mention something other than the Canada tr health transfer as well, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, well, number one is is uh, you know immigration. We're in desperate need of people. More people come here to fill the jobs. Uh, you know, it'll be positive for our GDP. It'll be positive for the revenues coming up to the uh, the Queens Park coffers. Uh, but it, it also helps the supply chain. Uh, the supply chain still broken right across uh, the world, actually, not just here in on Ontario, but across the world and North America. So we were in desperate need of uh, people. Uh, right now, they gave us allocations of 9,000 people. It just doesn't cut it when we have 340,000 jobs available. So we, we just want a fair deal. We want the same as what Quebec has, you know, and I've talked to Francois Legault about it, and he, he agrees. 
uh, you know, as as the federal government, and it's not, by the way, it's not just this federal government. It was the prior federal government as well. They get backlogged in the ministry uh, over the immigration, and we we need to move things forward a lot a lot quicker than what's happening right right now. Um, and uh, on a different topic, why isn't Ontario participating in the uh, Emergencies Act inquiry? And uh, are you leaving the door open to uh, participating down the line? Well, if they, they call me, I'll participate, but OPP will be uh, acting there. And I just want to thank the OPP for the great job they did in Ottawa, the great job they're going to do in Canada today. And I want to thank all the police agencies right across Ontario and the federal government, the RCMP, for the incredible job they did. Uh, do you know what we can't ever have again? is when they cut off the border and we were losing $700 million of trade. Uh, we could never have that, and I tell you, that will never happen again. We've given the police the tools to make sure we keep our borders open. And folks, you know, like, be considerate this weekend. You're going to Ottawa, be considerate. It's Canada Day, we're Canadians. You know, like, just everyone have a good time, a safe time. Stay healthy and safe and spend time with your families. You know, and look at these police officers that that typically may have vacation days to spend with their families. And this is a sacrifice our police officers do every single day, day in and day out. Now they're canceling all their vacation and they're going to Ottawa. You know, it's just not fair. I'm, I'm all for peaceful protest and you can demonstrate, but you know, no, no, no shenanigans this weekend. Just be peaceful and let, let people of Ottawa enjoy their weekend. We, we, we Honestly, we shouldn't even be going through this. It's disappointing, but it is what it is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Th thanks everyone. I want to wish everyone a very happy Canada Day. We live in the greatest province, any jurisdiction in the world. We live in the greatest country. Uh, and folks, if you have friends, you have relatives, and they want to come here and start a career and work hard and give back to the community, please invite them to Canada, invite them to Ontario. Our arms are, are wide open, and uh, I'm just uh, so grateful for uh, everything everyone does. We're Team Ontario. We're the best in the world. Thank you so much, and God bless everyone. Have a great Canada Day. Thank you.